Many thanks for inviting me to give this talk on the IP1 prostogram study. My name is Hashim Ahmed. I'm Professor and Chair of Urology at Imperial College London, and I also chair the Prostate Research Group at the UK's National Cancer Research Institute. This is a bit of a whistle-stop tour of the study and an elevator pitch for why this sh should or could be one of the future screening strategies. We started off evaluating MRI in the prostate cancer pathway in the UK with a view to carrying out focal therapy and localizing prostate cancer, and then realized that the bigger picture was to use it in diagnosis of prostate cancer in secondary care. And now recently over the last few years, realized that maybe the bigger prize is to use it in the community to actually screen for prostate cancer in many ways, like mammography for breast cancer. Idea is to use an abbreviated 10 to 12 minute, maybe even shorter in future, MRI of the prostate to localize and detect uh, any significant areas. No contrast and no endorectal coil. And the reason being that we know PSA threshold of three or above can miss clinically important cancers, which then progress later on. With a um, view to doing this, we actually ended up scanning our own prostates in order to optimize the uh, scanner that we were using. During the Christmas uh, quiz, we had to guess which of our prostates were which. Uh, I won't tell you which one's mine, but none of us thankfully had any disease or in the prostate or anything suspicious at least. The prostogram study was designed as a paired screen positive uh, study. We had two screening centers set up, but with about seven primary care practices and also other strategies to recruit men from wide, diverse ethnic backgrounds. Men aged 50 to 69 were, years were invited, and those who agreed would undergo a PSA test, an abbreviated prostogram MRI, and also an ultrasound transrectally, which included B mode and shear wave elastography. And we won't go through the results of that, but the ultrasound in the end didn't work that well. If any of these tests were positive, men would be advised to have a prostate biopsy. But both the tests and the way they were reported and the patients were blinded to which test was actually positive. And this allowed us to make sure we did not have any selection bias in terms of which men ended up getting a biopsy. And all of the biopsies were transperineal, systematic 12 core, and included targeting if there was a suspicious lesion on MRI or ultrasound. And for the purpose of this study, we defined clinically important cancer as the presence of any grade group two or higher. Our recruitment strategy was for a two-year period, but in the end, as you will see from this graph, we recruited 12 months ahead of time. It was a very popular study. In terms of the biopsy rates, that certain tests and certain test thresholds would lead to, we found that an MRI score of four or five would lead to a similar rate of biopsy as a PSA test of three or greater. And all of the other tests and test thresholds would lead to a higher biopsy rate because of equivocal findings. As a result, if you look on the right side of this bar chart, the score of four to five for an MRI test would find significantly more prostate cancers compared to PSA, a threshold of three, and almost all of those cancers were found in the targeted biopsies rather than the systematic biopsies. And when we use these results to model out various strategies based on PSA thresholds followed by a prostogram MRI in the community, we found that this is where we currently sit. This would be after one screening round based on the prostogram study. This would be using a threshold of PSA greater than one or equal to one to lead to a prostogram MRI. And if that was scored as, as three or above, then these are the sort of outcomes you would get in terms of biopsy rates, so higher biopsy rates, but significantly more cancers. This is where probably the UK, if it did have a widespread screening practice, would perform. So a PSA threshold of three leading to an MRI. And if that was scored four, 
then we would biopsy. And what we found was the optimal one, the strategy that was closest to the top left, which minimized the biopsy rates, but maximized cancer detection. This is after one screening round would be a PSA threshold of one or greater leading to an MRI. And if that MRI was scored four or five, then a biopsy would be carried out. So in conclusion, an abbreviated prostate MRI, prostogram here, as a screening test in the community seems to find more clinically significant prostate cancers than a PSA threshold of three. In combination with a PSA threshold of one, it has a lower biopsy rate and maintains its higher sensitivity for clinically significant cancers. This strategy clearly requires testing in a more definitive comparative trial. Many thanks.